Hello everybody, welcome to this massive open online course on solid fluid operations. Uh, as we are discussing about the conventional part of that particles in our uh, you know earlier uh, lectures, uh, there we are talking about what are the different characteristics even uh, flow and drag coefficients, even the uh, frictional resistances uh, and also how that solid particles can be you know uh, uh, separated by different mechanisms that we have discussed. Uh, till now and uh, today onward uh, in the successive three lectures we will try to uh, know something about that uh, uh, out of that conventional particle size it is regarding as uh, you know uh, nanoparticles. So, here in this case we will try to know about something uh, you know uh, nanoparticles and how that nanoparticles can be defined and what are the conventional size of that nanoparticles and where those uh, nanoparticles can be applied and also what are the you know methods by which that nanoparticles can be produced or uh, made or synthesized. So, in this lecture it will include includes that uh, you know definition of the nanoparticles, properties of nanoparticles and uh, what are the application of that nanoparticles and how are nanoparticles will be made. As you know that uh, smaller particles uh, size nowadays a very uh, trend uh, because uh, you will see that uh, these uh, nanoparticles that means very fine particles that will behave uh, differently than their bulk you know counterparts. As particle uh, becomes smaller you will see that uh, their surface area will increase and uh, uh, this uh, increase of surface area will give the different benefits of the mass transfer uh, or uh, you know production of different uh, chemicals uh, and also uh, other uh, physical and chemical processes and their uh, process will be intensified based on this you know uh, larger surface area. Now uh, what are those you know uh, different behaviors of that you know nanoparticles will show. Uh, you will see that there will be an increase in electrical and thermal conductivity, lowered melting points, stronger magnetism, unique optical properties of the uh, particles, even uh, several other you know properties of that materials will be you know uh, increased uh, if you uh, reduce the size of the particles from the conventional size to the nano size particles. Now, whenever we are talking about that nanoparticles, of course, that power of 10 will be, you know, matters. So, in that case, uh, if we are uh, considering that a different uh, size range of that particles from the 10 to the power minus 2 to, you know, 10 to the power minus 7, then uh, uh, we can have different types of, you know, uh, uh, you can say that materials, even different examples uh, in our, you know, uh, uh, daily life uh, that we can see there that uh, their size range of that particle will be you know within a power of that you know 10. Like if we consider that you know 10 to the power minus uh, 2 meters uh, to 10 to the power minus 3 meter there you will see that it will be maybe you know that 1 centimeter or 10 millimeter to you know 1000 micrometer within range you will see that whatever suppose dull suppose mushroom dull we are using that particle size of that mushroom dull is around 4 millimeter whereas if we talk about that plant cell its size is 100 micrometer and also human hair you will see that the size of the human hair is 10 to 50 micrometer so it is also within a range of that 10 to the power minus 4 meter that means 0 0.1 millimeter or you can say 100 micrometer even 10 to the power minus 4 to 10 to the power minus 5 within this range you will see that some you know particles will be like here red blood cell there its size is 2 to 5 micrometer. Even if we measure that liposome in our you know that cell uh, you will see that uh, its size will be 50 to 1000 uh, nanometer that means the size range within that range of you know 10 to the power minus 6 meter. Uh, or you can say 1 micrometer to uh, you know uh, 1000 nanometer. Even uh, if we go uh, even smaller of this size of 1000 nanometer, you will see that it will be like you know 
uh, 10 to the power minus 7 meter in range or you can say 0 0.1 micrometer or 100 nanometer or 1000 Armstrong there. So in that case, uh, you will see that, that uh, Dendrimer uh, that is uh, neuron you can say that the size is 1 to 10 uh, nanometer in size. So uh, these are the different uh, examples of you know particles uh, where that you can get within a range of 10 to the power minus 2 to 10 to the power minus 7 meter in range. So all those actually particles whatever we are assessing that will be also uh, within a range of you know 10 to the power something that means your power of 10 does matter and uh, this because of this the matter of this you know size range from this you know 10 to the power minus uh, 2 to 10 to the power minus 7 in range even uh, even smaller you can say based on that you know size of these particles derivation of these materials uh, based on the size that is come from very uh, new ancient uh, period. So according to that period that uh, we can uh, say that uh, some will be you know that conventional particle size based on that that is age and up to that you know nano material or nano particle range that actually uh, defined based on that development of that material characteristics based on their size. So if we are talking about that uh, 10 to the power 5 uh, you know BC that means at that time that nanoparticles or uh, you know nanomaterials about that it was actually dark. So at that time only stone and wood that they were working but uh, at the age comes you will see that uh, gradually that you know size of the materials coming gradually lower to lower lower and accordingly the different applications at different ages are there. Here sometimes it is called bronze age, it is 3000 you know, BC, then iron age, you will see that uh, cement age where uh, you know uh, this age 0, steel age then you can say polymer composites that is developed in 1990 that means after uh, BC and then you will see that uh, you will see that uh, nanomaterials or nanoparticles that is derived from 2000s onward even till now it is being you know developed in different way or synthesized and also their application nowadays. So we can see that there will be a change of that you know material development from the ancient days to the you know present days uh, based on uh, its application in terms of their size of the materials. And also if we are talking about that nano particles or nano size range of the material then there will be certain uh, you know uh, range of that material which can be regarded as a nano material. So how that nano uh, terms has come and how that nano materials can be defined there. So if you are talking about that nano you will see that it will be actually recognized as the dimensions between 1 nanometer to 1000 nanometer where 1000 nanometer means 1 micrometer. So below that 1 micrometer we can say that here uh, it will be that nano meter range. Okay, so 1 nanometer to 1000 nanometer within this you know range of this dimension it will be regarded as nano. This nano terms basically uh, came from that Greek word that is nanos which means that dwarf or extremely small and it can be used as a prefix for any unit to mean a billionth of that uni unit. Uh, here in this case we can say that uh, this nanometer is applied for the uh, length here within that you know range of that 1 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. So 1 nanometer is extremely small we can say that is in length corresponding to 1 billionth of 1 meter or 1 millionth of 1 millimeter or you can say 1000th of that 1 micrometer like this. So these are basically that nano and then uh, definition you will see that uh, uh, this definition of this nano particles comes uh, based on that. Uh, different material characteristics even in which fields that is being applied and also it can be you know defined based on that you know structure of that you know material. So uh, the definition of nano particles differ depending upon the materials, fields and also application concerned. The particles uh, in the three digit range of nanometer uh, from 1 nanometer to 1 micrometer could be called as nano particles. And also uh, you will see that particles smaller than 10 to uh, 20 nanometer where the physical properties of the solid material themselves 
would drastically change and because of the change of that physical properties nowadays this nanoparticles are being applied for various you know applications for you know uh, deriving uh, in our you know domestic uh, usable materials there and also in industry they are actually uh, using for uh, various you know processes to get that intensified way of that yield of that process in many cases you will see that the uh, particles from 1 to 100 nanometer are generally called as nanoparticles there sometimes regarded as the particles smaller than those called conventionally submicron particles so it is uh, concretely less than the wavelength of visible light its lower limit is about 400 nanometer as a measure which need to be treated uh, differently from the submicron particles now different organization they have given different uh, definitions for this nano particles or nano materials in 2008 uh, the international organization for standardization that is iso defined a nano particle as a discrete uh, you know nano object where all three cartesian dimensions are less than 100 nanometer so the ISO standard similarly defined two dimensional nano objects the nano disks and nano plates and also one dimensional nano objects that is called nano fibers and nano tubes. So here uh, as per this ISO the definition of that nano particles is basically the particle size which will be within a uh, range of less than 100 nanometer okay and also uh, as per this ISO uh, they told that you know the you know nanoparticles uh, you know dimension will be uh, as uh, two dimension and three dimension like this so uh, two dimensional uh, nano objects will be like this like nano disk and nano plates whereas the one dimensional nano objects it will be nano fibers and nano tubes here in this picture it is shown that uh, nano disk nano tube uh, silver nano particles you know silver nano plates and also nano fiber it is shown in the uh, slide there so how those actually uh, look like that uh, you can see here also another definition which will be more technical as per commission of european union in 2011 the commission endorsed a more technical but wider ranging definition of this nanoparticle according to that commission of european union a natural incidental of manufactured uh, material containing particles in an unbound state or as an aggregate or you can say as an agglomerate and where uh, for 50 percent or more of the particles in the number size distribution one or more external dimensions is in the size range of 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer so this is the statement that they have given for the uh, definition of nanoparticles in 2011 so here also it is defined that the size range will be 1 nanometer to 100 nanometer so the lower limit of 1 nanometer is used here because atomic bond lengths are reached at 0.1 nanometer so uh, 1 nanometer is actually uh, used as for that uh, reference length uh, for its definition to up to 100 nanometer and uh, there are uh, different types of nanoparticles will be there as per this slide here shown here there are several uh, different types of nanoparticles uh, are shown here some will be based on size shape and material properties and some will be you know based on organic and inorganic compound based some will be based on carbon ceramic semiconducting or polymeric substance based some will be either it is soft or hard particles based on that these nanoparticles are being you know classified now based on size shape and uh, you know material properties we are having that you will see that one dimensional uh, two dimensional and three dimensional even zero dimensional nanoparticle also like zero dimensional nanoparticles like you will see that q dots even it is called uh, fullerenes and uh, gold nanoparticles and one dimensional nanoparticles like here you will see that carbon or metallic nano or tubes gold nano wires polymeric nano fibers metal nano rods like this and two dimensional nanoparticles like carbon coated nano uh, plates graphene sheets even uh, you will see that layered nano materials there 
and three dimensional nanoparticles bulk uh, nanomaterials polycrystals even liposome those are actually three dimensional nanoparticles and based on that organic and inorganic type we are having inorganic type like gold nanoparticle quantum dots like this iron oxides nanoparticles like you know lanthanide iron uh, ion even uh, also you will see that uh, organic based like dendrites uh, dendrites uh, and also micelles uh, liposome even uh, ferritin also there so these are the you know uh, different types of uh, nanoparticles which is uh, classified based on that organic and inorganic uh, compound based on carbon ceramic semiconducting or polymeric substances this nanoparticles can be you know classified also like carbon nanotubes and uh, fullerenes there so these are called nanoparticles of type ceramic or carbon types and also hard or soft particles like uh, you know titanium silica particles and also uh, fullerenes are that is called you know hard particles that is nano size particles and soft nanoparticles are like liposome even uh, vesicles and also you know nano droplets etc basic shapes of the nanoparticles are like uh, zero dimensional one dimensional two dimensional and three dimensional zero dimensional like like quantum dots uh, fullerenes and gold nanoparticles one dimensional like gold nano dots carbon nanotubes and nano wires two dimensional like uh, silver nano plates graphene sheets and uh, bilayer graphene and three dimensional liposome and uh, uh, polycrystalline materials even dendrimer like this so these are uh, the basic uh, shapes of nano particles are there some examples of nano particles and their related phenomena is given in this you know table this is taken from that you know hosoka vital uh, books uh, that is nano particle technology in this case you will see that this nano particle based on its size you will see that different type of nano particles based on their you know metal type inorganic organic or bio or pharmaceutical or aerosol type that are different types of nano particles and um, uh, based on the size also it is given in the table there so uh, go through this table once then you will be able to understand that uh, within a certain range of that you know dimension what are the different uh, you know example of that you know uh, nano particles that can be obtained here now uh, then we have to you know discuss about that uh, what are the different features of nano particles what are the different properties uh, of that nano particles there now with the decreasing particle size that is coming uh, na to nano size the solid the solid particles generally uh, tend to show different properties from the bulk material and even the physical properties like uh, you know morphological structure uh, even thermal properties even electromagnetic properties surface area properties mechanical properties even optical properties those will be you know changing as uh, particle size uh, decreases and also you will see that some particles will be having some activation enhancement of that particle at its surface like you know particles as they are micronized they are affected uh, by behavior of atoms or the molecules themselves and show different properties from those of the bulk the change of that bonding state of that atoms or the molecules will be there even you will see that if its size will be uh, reduced then on the surface this activation energy will be changed based on this you know surface area you know increment so in this case uh, you will see that uh, if we you know consider a cube uh, of 1 cm and if it is divided into a cube of 1 micrometer you will see that particle number will increases to 10 to the power 12 and being divided into 1 of 10 nanometer then it amount will be up to 10 to the power 18 so in that case huge number of uh, you know nanoparticles will be there and each particles will give you its surface area so one big size particles if it's converted to you know 10 to the power 18 number of uh, nanoparticles there you will see that uh, surface area will be increased so the atoms or the molecules at the surface are more active than those inside the solid particles because of easy bonding with the contracting materials and causes various changes in particle properties 
So, in this case we can enhance the activation of this you know particle surface by decreasing its size to up to nano range. And uh, because of that changing its uh, nanoparticles the size as the micronization of that solid particles. In that case uh, the specific surface area will be increased generally in reversal proportion to the particle size. If you increase the particle size uh, surface area will re reduce whereas if you decrease the particle size surface area will increase. So, when the particle of 1 centimeter is micronized to 1 meter uh, and 10 nanometer you will see that the specific surface area becomes 10,000 times and million times respectively here 1 micrometer. And in this case uh, as the increase in the specific surface area directly influences such properties such as the solution and reaction rates of the particles. So, as we increase the surface area you will see that uh, the activation energy for that reaction will be increased by that catalyst surfaces. Now, uh, another properties like morphological or structural properties. What is that morphology? It is basically a form of nanomaterials that is comprising its uh, shape, size and structure and it is important for materials for exploiting their properties. Some uh, materials will be you know amorphous in nature that will usually adopt a spherical shape or nanospheres and anisotropic microcrystalline whiskers that will correspond to their particular you know crystal shape. For example, there are nano uh, spheres that are spherical, nano uh, reefs you can say, nano boxes, nano clusters, nano tubes like that. These are the example of that nano materials or nano particles. In that case you will see that optical filters and biosensors that are actually that are using that uh, optical properties of that gold nano particles and it requires an isotropy of the particle shape as larger shapes produce greater plasmon losses. So, in that case nanoparticles will give you that better you know optical properties based on conventional sizes. And also the morphological characteristics will be different like some will be flatness, some will be sphericity and also aspect ratio. In that case uh, these are the parameters based on which you can you know assess that morphological structure. The shape is attained during that growth through a self assembling process that is detected by the you know interplay of size and molecular interactions. And high aspect ratio the nanoparticles include nanotubes. I think we have discussed that aspect ratio in the beginning of this you know course that that what is the different characteristics of the materials uh, there. There are one terms we have discussed that you know circularity aspect ratio and also sphericity all those things. So, this high aspect ratio nanoparticles include nanotubes and nano wires with various shapes such as helix, zigzags, belts or perhaps nano wires we can say with the diameter that wires that will vary with length. And uh, small aspect ratio morphologies include spherical, oval, cubic, prism, helical or pillar. In that case collections of many particles exist as powder, suspension or colloids. So, these are the uh, different uh, you know parameters based on which you can assess that morphology of that nanoparticles. For that certain you know equipments are available to measure those you know aspect ratios, sphericity, flatness, even surface area, even other surface characteristics. Here in the picture it is shown different morphologies of nanomaterials. Here graphene sheets in A and also you will see silver nanoparticles in B and C silver nano wires in the gold nano rods, gold nanoparticles, nickel oxide nanoparticles and also copper oxide nanoparticles here in the picture. So, uh, here in this case I want to acknowledge with that that uh, this has been taken from this you know metal nanomaterials immune effects and implications of that physicochemical properties on sensitization in this paper. It is published in journal of immuno, immunotechnology or toxicology there. So, thanks uh, and I am grateful uh, for them to use this you know their picture in this you know academic teaching. And also thermal properties there is another important properties of the nanoparticles. The melting point of the material decreases from that of the bulk material because they tend to be able to move easier at the lower temperature. You will see that some gold nanoparticles 
their melting point specifically you know that 103036 uh, kelvin as a bulk but it starts to decrease remarkably below the particle size of about 20 nanometer and drastically below 10 nanometer and also then becomes more than 500 uh, lower than that of the gold bulk around 2 nanometer. So, as the size of that particles decreases this you know uh, the melting point will uh, you know will, will be lowered. The reduction of that melting point basically uh, of that ultra fine particles is regarded as one of the unique feature of the nanoparticles related to it. Uh, you know that aggregation and grain growth of that you know nanoparticles or improvement of sintering performance of uh, ceramic materials. So, there is a you can say that linear relationship between that ratio of melting point of nanoparticles to that of bulk materials and a reciprocal number of a particle diameter. Also another property of nanoparticle it is called electromagnetic properties. Here you will see that this uh, electromagnetic uh, properties so play a great role for that improvement of the product performance when these particles will uh, you know uh, comes to reduce its size. And the dielectric constant of suppose uh, lead uh, uh, tilicon trioxide tends to increase considerably as the particles become smaller than about 20 nanometer. And also the minimum particle size to keep the ferroelectric uh, property critical size differs depending on the kind and composition of the materials. So, it varies from 7 nanometer for lead tilicon trioxide to 370 nanometer for barium and lead tilicon compounds there. Also, you will see that the you will see that Curie point defined as the point changing from ferroelectric material to the paraelectric phases of uh, PBTIO3 reduces drastically with the decreasing particle size below 20 to 30 nanometer. And uh, also uh, the optical properties of that nano uh, size particles will be changed as the size of the particles becomes in several nanometers range. They absorb the light with a specific wavelength as the plasmon absorption as uh, you know stated by you know Kurukawa and in 1996 from their you know experimental observation. And this is caused by plasma oscillation of the electrons as they stated and are transmitted light with different color that would be depending on the kind of metal and particle size that is obtained. So, as per this uh, Kobayashi 2004 experimental observation they have stated this the change of this you know specific uh, you know wavelength as the plasma absorption there. This is because of that the plasma oscillation of the electrons and the transmitted light with the different color that will depend on kind of metals and particle size that. So, in case of gold nanoparticles it is reported that the maximum light absorption wavelength will be 525 nanometer for the particles of 15 nanometer, but it is enlarged by about 50 nanometer for 45 nanometer particles. Then another property it is called that mechanical properties. You will see that hardness of the crystalline materials it will increase with the decreasing crystalline size and the mechanical strength of that material you will see that increases by you know reducing its size. Also uh, you can say that not only in the micro uh, it may be you know that uh, the mechanical strength will be you know increases uh, up to its nano size range also. So, basically that uh, you know mechanical strength we can say that it will be increased if you uh, reduce the size. And also you will see that contact angle that will be increased as the size uh, of that you know particles will increase. Okay. The contact angles of all liquid metals will decrease uh, at less than 40 nanometer and a remarkable decrease of that contact angles is observed when particle radius is less than 10 nanometer. Okay. So, uh, here uh, so uh, contact angle is basically a function of then particle size. So, contact angle will be increased if particle size increases and contact angle will reduce if the particle size is coming less. Okay. So, this contact angle uh, will give you that whether that uh, you know weightability characteristics of the particles or not. So, below uh, you know 90 degree of that you know 
uh, contact angle it will give you that hydrophobic nature of that materials even above 90 degree of this contact angle it will give you that hydrophilic nature of the material and also one of the important point here to uh, know about that characteristics of the nanomaterials which will give you that more surface area as the size you if you reduce it so whenever you are getting that nano size particles there will be specific sur surface area increased so that specific surface area can be calculated by this equation number 4 here s will be equal to 6 by rho l what is that uh, you know rho is the density of that material and l is the length of that size of cubical size of the material suppose this you know uh, you know the surface area of each uh, divided cube as shown in the figure here one big cube is there where volume is 1 into 1 into 1 centimeter cube means here all side of this you know cube will be equal to 1 uh, centimeter so if you are having this you know cube that is the its surface area of each uh, divided cube will be given 6 into l square and the number of divided cube is given as uh, 1 by l cube therefore the total surface area of all divided cubes can be expressed as 1 by l cube into 6 l square thus we can say that uh, 6 by uh, l uh, here uh, we are having this uh, you know uh, total surface area so here specific surface area then it will be coming as 6 by l divided by rho that means per unit you know mass so considering that uh, uh, a, a dense cube of 1 centimeter on a side is divided into cubes uh, then l centimeter on a side then uh, uh, we are having that surface area specific surface area as you know that 6 by rho l and uh, composite structure of that nanoparticles the question of nanoparticles uh, you know increases with increase uh, in the surface energy of the particle by the nano size, nano size defect you will see that all particles will have a certain surface energy based on the surface area also per unit surface area what will be the surface energy if you in if you if you reduce the size of the particles your size uh, will reduce means your surface area will increase so in that case more you know uh, uh, surface energy of the particles can be uh, obtained so in that case more surface area will be released more surface energy will be reduced by that nanoparticle and also classification of that composite structure of nanoparticles as we classify that you know nanoparticle which uh, you know form that composite structure so in that case the composite structure using nanoparticles uh, in that case type of composite structure will be there based on which we can have different types of you know materials uh, like some will be coarse shell some will be internal dispersion some will be hollow shape some will be porous so in that case if we have that composite structure formed from agglomeration of nanoparticles in that case you can have the shape like this you know or structure like coarse shell internal dispersion even hollow porous even uh, some will be uh, coating that uh, based on that surface modification and also agglomeration and the composite structure body fabricated from the nanoparticles based on which you can get that composite structure like dead nano dense body nano porous body nano uh, thin film like this and different composite structure as shown in the picture here some will be core shell like uh, you know a this is core shell and then here b is called that internal dispersion and c is basically that agglomeration d is basically what this nanoparticle coating and e is hollow shape hollow type and also f is basically porous type of uh, uh, structure and z is bulk body that is uh, from nano grains you can say and h is basically porous body from nano grains and also i that is nano thin film okay so these are the composite structure of that nanomaterials which will contribute to that uh, formation of this structure now we have to know some application of that nanoparticles where that nanoparticles to be applied after you know knowing that different characteristics and uh, also that synthesis of that nanoparticles then you have to apply that nanoparticles somewhere that will be useful so here we have not uh, actually discussed about that synthesis of that nanoparticles in the next lecture we will try to discuss about that nano uh, particle synthesis but here 
we will first try to know some applications where that uh, nanoparticles can be you know used. Now you will see that based on that their intrinsic properties of the structure that is uh, created from that uh, nanoparticles even the effects of nanoparticles based on their structure and also type of materials we can apply this you know nanoparticles in uh, different you know uh, emerging technologies. Like here some applications will be in the cosmetics and uh, sunscreens uh, you know lotion development there. You will see that in cosmetics and sunscreens you will see the conventional ultraviolet pro protection sunscreen that lacks long term stability during uses if you are using that cos uh, nanoparticles. Even the sunscreen including nanoparticles such as titanium you know dioxide even it will provide that numerous advantages in that case if you use that nanoparticles. Here you will see that uh, some lipsticks that uses iron oxide nanoparticles as a pigment and also for protection of that UV you that uh, titanium uh, oxide and zinc oxide nanoparticles are being used in that lotion or uh, other you know that uh, uh, cosmetics there because uh, they are you know transparent to visible light as well as absorb and reflect that UV uh, rays when that titanium oxide or zinc oxide has to be added to that you know cosmetics. In uh, you know electronics uh, area you are in the electronics industry they are using this nanoparticles like use of nanoparticles in the display technology for computer monitors or uh, televisions for large size and also high brightness uh, displays in your you know mobile also. For example, nano crystalline lead you know uh, telluride, cadmium sulphide zinc uh, selenide and sulphide are used in the light emitting diodes of modern displays those are you know that nanocrystalline particles are there or materials are there. Also you will see that that batteries sometimes made from nanocrystalline nickel and metal hydrides and due to their large surface area which will require less uh, you know researching and last longer. So these nanocrystalline nickel and metal hydrides are being used. And the increase in electrical conductivity of nanoparticles are used to detect like gases like carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, ammonia in a gaseous mixer. So to, to, to sense those you know uh, nitrogen dioxide or other gases based on that uh, conductivity properties of that you know particles, these nanoparticles are being used for detecting all those gaseous uh, components from the gas mixer. Nowadays it is coming that nano catalyst particles there where high surface area will be there that will offer you that high catalytic activity due to their extremely large surface area to the volume ratio. The nanoparticles uh, function as efficient catalyst in the production of various chemicals like uh, use of platinum uh, nanoparticles in the you know automobile catalytic converters as they reduce the amount of platinum required due to very high surface area of the nanoparticles and also reduce the cost significantly and improving their performance. Also these nanoparticles can be applied in medicine here nanotechnology has improved that medical field by use of nanoparticles in drug delivery. The drug can be delivered to the specific cells by using nanoparticles. Here you will see that in the traditional treatment such as an artificial implants and organ uh, transplants can be replaced by tissue engineering. One such example is the growth of bones carbon nanotube okay it is called you know that uh, scaffolds nanotube scaffolds carbon nanotube scaffolds there. So uh, in this case this uh, you know uh, bones carbon nanotube scaffolds when it will be you know use that that bones can be you know growth by this uh, scaffolds and uh, for instance you know you will see that uh, iron oxide even gamma type iron oxide that super magnetic iron oxide nanoparticles are the main nanoparticles that is used for site specific drug delivery. And also the particles are such a small that can pass, can pass through that cell membrane and deliver agents like DNA and protein into the particular cells. In food industry you will see that the improvement in production, processing, protection and packaging of food that is achieved by incorporating this nanotechnology. For example, a nano composite coating in a food packaging process can directly introduce the antimicrobial substances on the coated film surfaces. 
Okay. So, these are the application and also uh, in construction industry also they are uh, trying to you know implement that you know nanotechnology just you know how to enhance that process by making them quicker or inexpensive and safer. For example, when uh, nano silica is mixed with the normal uh, concrete, the nanoparticles can improve its mechanical properties and also improvements in durability. Also you will see that in paint, you will see that with self uh, healing abilities and corrosion resistance and insulation that can be obtained by adding some nanoparticles to the paints. Also that nanoparticles can be used for sterilizing or anti-fouling properties and catalyze powerful uh, chemical reaction that break down that violet or it is called that uh, some organic compounds which are more volatile in nature and some organic compounds that is uh, as a you know that uh, pollutants you can say. So, that titanium dioxide nanoparticles can be used for that you know separating those you know unwanted you know compounds in the mixer or in wastewater you will see that sometimes nowadays nanoparticles are being used for absorb that some you know trace elements by that nanoparticles. And also uh, the killing that microorganism by nanoparticles there is a specific property of the nanoparticles to kill that you know uh, microorganisms. So, there see this uh, titanium uh, dioxide or other nanoparticles are being used there. Also uh, in environmental remediation that I said that there will be unique physical and chemical properties of that nanoparticles that can be used in environmental remediation to enhance that performance of renewable uh, you know energy sector as well as some uh, removal of some uh, hazardous or poisonous element from the waste materials. The nano particles are used to treat the surface water by disinfection, purification and, and uh, desalination. Also nano filtration now it is, it is coming which is recent uh, you know membrane development that is for membrane filtration techniques for water purification widely used in food and dairy industries also. You will see that the major use of nanoparticles are to treat that municipal and industrial waste water as well as the sludge production. For the extensive research for you know improvement of that that is production of oil by this nanoparticles sometimes you know enhanced oil recovery that oil can be recovered by this applying that nanoparticles there. Also you will see that uh, some hydrophobic property of that some nanoparticles has led to self cleaning solar cells there in the energy sector. You will see that high thermal conductivity and heat absorption capacity of certain nanoparticles that can be used to coat boilers or solar concentrators to improve their thermal efficiency. So these are some examples in, in renewable energy uh, sectors. Also to produce that biosensor that nanoparticles nowadays are extensively used because of that nanoparticles has some optical and electronic properties. Okay. So, in that case these properties will make them suitable for biosensor application. The novel metals like gold, silver, platinum nanoparticles those uh, show actually special physicochemical features which make them the most popular components of nanoparticle based biosensors. And in this case uh, the role of that nanoparticles in electrochemical biosensors is to improve that sensitivity and signal detection. Also you will see that some nanoparticles like silver nanoparticles they have some ability to detect proteins which is used actually nowadays for you know cancer detection. Also uh, those particles can be used for detecting uh, glucose, DNA, even uh, dopamine, ascorbic acid even some other you know biological molecules. So that is why these nanoparticles are nowadays extensively used for the development of biosensors to detect different microorganism whether it is in the cell or not or some other you know chemical compounds is there any you know that proteins what is the amount of proteins are there uh, to detect that and also what is the DNA, RNA all those things uh, you know that uh, some biological molecules that will be detecting based on which uh, this treatment is uh, being done by assessing those things. And in this case that nanoparticle has that you know capability to improve that sensitivity and sen signal detection uh, where that uh, devices or biosensors are being used 
uh, where that you know nanoparticles will be used. Next uh, we are talking about that nanoparticles what are the physical properties, chemical properties, even how that nanoparticles being uh, defined and then where that nanoparticles can be applied. And now if you have that wide application of the nanoparticles then you have to produce that nanoparticles, you have to synthesize that, you have to make that nanoparticles. And uh, what are the techniques or what is the procedure to you know synthesize that nanoparticles? That means how can you make that nanoparticles? particles. So, that nanoparticles can be you know synthesized or can be made by two approaches. One is called that top down approach, another is called bottom up approach. That means top down physical method, another is called chemical method. Here in this slide it is shown that top down and bottom up. What is the top down methods? You will see that in the top down methods or it is called physical method. In this case some bulk material is physically broken down to a smaller molecules. So, that is called top down that means bulk size materials to be you know broken into a smaller size particles. So, this is done basically by physically or some physical uh, method some uh, equipment would be used to you know uh, breaking that you know bigger size particles into nano size. It is also called that is dry production method. Some common methods are like milling method, laser ablation method, spark ablation method. Another it is called bottom up that means chemical method. In this case you will see that some molecules that is from chemical some atoms will be uh, you know nucleating okay into a sized materials okay. It is called that nanoparticles that means here nucleating atomic size materials into the nanoparticles. It depends on the material which is being generated. Okay. So, it also called weight production method. Some common methods like Tarkevis method, it is called citrate reduction method, gas phase synthesis, block copolymer synthesis and also microbial synthesis. There are several methods there. So, we are having that method of two approaches, one is called top down and another is called bottom up. That is called physical method and chemical method. So, by these two methods we can synthesize the nanoparticles. Okay. So, up to this at least you know that how to you know uh, synthesize that nanoparticles. In the next lecture we will try to learn about that physical method and then successive lecture we will also try to learn about that chemical method by which you can synthesize nanoparticles. There it will be you know described in details and there also uh, some example and step by step methods will be discussed how to you know uh, synthesize that nanoparticles. So, in this lecture we have learned what is nanoparticles, how it is defined and uh, what are the application of the nanoparticles and what is the basic method by which you can you know synthesize that uh, nanoparticles. So, thank you for giving your attention. In the next lecture we will try to discuss more about the synthesis of nanoparticles by physical method. Thank you, have a nice day. Mm -hmm.